Hey guys, my name is David Seabury and I am not an artist. I would say I'm a creator of many things, but when it comes to what most people would consider traditional art, things like sketching, drawing, painting, I've always struggled to complete any of the concepts that I've tried to actually put to paper. Since I was a little kid though, I've always wanted to be an artist. Specifically, I always wanted to be a video game artist or a comic book artist. I wanted to find a way of bringing the characters and worlds and stories I had in my brain onto paper, but I never had the right amount of confidence or motivation to do so. I have a whole bookshelf worth of sketchbooks that lay almost empty with only the first few pages with partially finished sketches. And the few occasions that I do actually sit down and create a great piece of art, it's usually six to eight or even nine months later before I sit down again to finish an actual concept. And I know there are many more of you out there who have similar issues with your confidence and motivation to actually follow through with your creative endeavors. So I wanted to create this series as a way to help pass on the things that help motivate and inspire me to actually follow through with my creative concepts and improve as an artist. In this guide, I'll be covering a number of videos and guides and things like that that help me along the way to not only become more motivated to get back into art, but more importantly, become more confident as an artist. Because honestly, I think that's the biggest thing that holds a lot of people back from doing anything creative is they're not confident enough that their work, their creative uh, creations, you could say, uh, will hold up against other people's. And in the end, that's not what art's about. Art is not about whether your stuff is as good as someone else's, because the fact is the idea of what is good art is such a subjective thing. There's so many incredible artists that make amazing comic books, for instance, who have the most simplest designs where their entire characters are three shapes but they make them endearing. They add a level of character to their characters, something that is iconic, something that you attach to. And they know how to take those characters and create engaging stories with them. And in the end, that's what I'm hoping to do with this series. I hope by the end of it, I can actually have enough confidence and motivation to follow through with a complete comic book of my own, albeit likely a short one. Uh, it'll be a complete concept through and through with a complete story, uh, something that I could never imagine doing previous to this. The way I learn is a little spastic, you could say. I have a rather short attention span. I tend to bounce around a lot of videos and guides until I find something that really clicks with me. And it's usually not something that is taught in a traditional art manner. So a lot of the guides and videos and things we'll be talking about in this series will be a little bit non-traditional, but hopefully that's something that also clicks with you because that tends to click with me a little bit more. Trying to learn the history of art and trying to learn anatomy through learning the actual science of muscle and things like that really just has never clicked with me through the years so trying to pass it on to you guys will be a little bit impersonal. So today, for instance, we are going to be talking about anatomy and I'm gonna be referencing a video from Ergo Josh, which I'll link below. And he had a really creative way for learning anatomy uh, by not actually learning, quote unquote, the traditional route of anatomy. So we'll be covering a little bit about uh, his uh, suggestions today, as well as talking about kind of my background as an artist and really why I wanted to, to do this series. So I hope you enjoy. All right, guys, let's get into it. So as I said before, I'll be covering a technique that I learned from a YouTube artist called Ergo Josh. Uh, he actually talks about this technique as a, not necessarily as a replacement for learning the traditional route of anatomy and learning the actual muscle structures and bone structures and things like that, but as a way to help you recognize shapes that make up the human body and kind of learn anatomy a little bit faster. And then once you have those general shapes down, you can feel comfortable making any kind of pose from just your mind then you can actually improve your structures by learning anatomy, learning the actual muscle structures and bone structures. But by using his technique, you should be able to draw any basic pose from memory. And you do that by taking reference photos and being able to basically see through them into their basic shape structures. Uh, and being able to specifically focus on things like perspective and understanding how the cylinders, triangles, and squares would look based on their positions perspective-wise and being able to draw those basic shapes. Uh, and then hopefully you'll be able to kind of instantly reference those in your mind once you've done it enough times that you can not, you won't need reference photos anymore and you can just draw any of these characters from memory. Um, I'll include his full length video down in the description below. He goes over the technique in a little bit slower detail than I'm obviously doing here, 
Uh, so I would highly encourage you to go check out his full video. We'll actually just be talking a little bit about my background as an artist while I show you the footage here, um, a bit sped up obviously for, for time. For this technique, you're gonna wanna use some kind of reference photo. Ergo Dross uses a lot of photos that he finds on Pinterest and he links actually a great Pinterest board that he's put together with some references. I decided to go out and find my own and I actually decided to go with Nick Cage because why not? You could pick whatever you want for anatomical poses to work off of from this technique. So as I mentioned before, I always wanted to be an artist. Specifically, I really wanted to be a video game artist. And then later on in life, I really wanted to be a comic book artist. And of course, this comes from me being a huge nerd. I always played video games as a kid, specifically things like RPGs and open world adventure games, uh, Elder Scrolls, Jade Empire, Knights of the Old Republic. Those were huge games when I was younger. And those really encouraged me to look into a career in video games. But I was always discouraged by my other classmates who just seemed like they were way better artists than me. I was drawing, you know, a lot of the stuff I was drawing at the time was inspired by video games, but also I was a huge Yu-Gi-Oh fan. So I was drawing a lot of like monsters and creatures and things like that. Meanwhile, my friends could draw, you know, they were masters of like, at the time they seemed like masters of the human anatomy when they were like 10, 11. And that just seemed amazing to me and that was really discouraging you know year after year from you know elementary school middle school uh, and then into high school being like i'm seeing these kids start out at such a young age and be so determined that this is what they want to do and they're spending all their time improving and i wasn't seeing that myself because honestly i wasn't doing anything to progressively improve you know, drawing every day and just having fun with it isn't necessarily always going to help you improve. You have to have some kind of structure to it. And I struggled to have structure to my training process, to my learning process, so I never really uh, improved. When I got into high school though, I did try to get into an animation class and I think oddly enough, uh, fate stepped in and that the animation class that I tried to sign up for and it was labeled as video game animation wasn't actually that class. The school didn't have the budget to afford Maya and the other programs that they had previously had in the past years. And it was actually a film class now. And I was really heartbroken because I was on the edge of deciding whether or not I really wanted to get into a career in video game art. And I thought maybe taking a class on video game animation would really be the, the thing that would inspire me and encourage me to pursue and perfect my skills. And I was like, oh, this class isn't going to happen. I was gonna, it's a film class. I don't wanna take a film class. Uh, and actually my my dad encouraged me to stay in the class and, and follow through with it. He's like, see, see what you think, see if you like it. And I followed through with it and that's been my career path now. I, I took three years of film class in high school and then went to film school for a while. Uh, and then I, you know, I, I do this now for a living. I, I make videos for a living. It's because of the fact that I wanted to pursue a career in art and just kept falling through. Uh, and I think sometimes you, you've got to kind of listen to, you got to listen to the signs that the world is throwing you sometimes. But I, I always wanted to come back to it. I still love drawing. I still love sketching. As I said before, I have a whole bookshelf full of sketchbooks, even though most of them are primarily empty. I, I do love sketching and I think it's a great way to express creative ideas, even if you're not looking to pursue a career in the arts or become a fresh, professional artist or illustrator or anything like that. I think having the skills and confidence to express your ideas through art is very important. If you're, you know, let's say even if you're in film, being able to sketch out things like storyboards is a very useful tool to have. There's people in film that their whole job is their storyboard artists uh, for writers and script writers where they can help kind of take their concepts and put them into a, a storyboard that allows the cinematographer to picture kind of how the script really lays out. Let's say you're even a, a chef. Let's say you want to you know, design a cookbook and you have these concepts for maybe your plating in mind. Having the ability to sketch any kind of idea or concept out, most importantly, not even with a lot of skill, but with a lot of confidence where you can just get some form of your idea out on the paper and be like, I'm confident in what I did. This is what I wanted to design. Even if it doesn't look like a masterpiece, you still got that idea out on the paper in a different creative way. And I feel like that's very important to think in different creative mindsets instead of just the one that you may be used to and comfortable with in your actual career set. Uh, so I wanted to follow back on that because it's been so long since I actually sat down with any intention to seriously improve my drawing capabilities. 
Uh, so I wanted to create this series as a way to, as I said before, encourage other people who maybe haven't drawn in a very long time but have been wanting to, or maybe you have been drawing consistently for a while, but every time you actually try to draw, you just beat yourself up over it. It's not coming out the way you expected it to. You're not improving the way you expected it, expected yourself to improve. Like I said, I've been there, so I want to help other people get out of that rut by showing you the stages it took me to get out of it. Kind of taking you along the way of, as you can probably see here, I've not drawn an, any kind of human figure in quite a while. Um, I felt this exercise from Ergo Dross was a very interesting and engaging way to kind of personally get my mindset back into drawing people again. But I think it's it's going to take a while. This is not going to be uh, a simple series where I go, cool, let me show you how to how to draw. And then like after a couple videos, I'm some master, you know, it's not going to be like that. So I hope this series kind of shows you that it is possible with determination and a lot of practice that you can kind of get through that rut and build up the confidence you need to, again, not necessarily become an amazing artist, but I think the first step to being an amazing artist is to be confident in your own capabilities to get there. Uh, so that's hopefully what uh, we can show you in this series. We'll be kind of covering more in-depth things in the future and doing a little bit more coverage with some of the guides and, and videos that I find help me along the way. And we'll be talking a little bit more probably about comics and video games that have inspired me and that motivate me to continue to improve my skills. Because ultimately, you know, you need something to motivate you. You need sometimes an external source to be like, man, I want to create something like that. Uh, but you should be able to grow your internal sources as well, something that motivates you internally to improve as a creative. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, I'll lay out all of the, you know, finished kind of structural forms here. Hopefully, as I continue using this technique, I'll see improvement over time. We'll kind of feature different techniques in the future. But I hope you learned something from this video. Please go check out Ergo Josh's full video. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Please go check that out so you can learn this technique as well. I think it honestly really did help kind of break that creative rut for me, being the first time back drawing actual anatomical figures. I think this is a really fun way of doing it. Maybe you can go out there like I did and, and find some some particular character you want to draw anatomically. Uh, Nick Cage was just a fun fun way to start for myself. Thank you guys very much for, for joining us. Please make sure you subscribe. We're doing this series, but we do a lot of various series on this channel with other artists. Uh, we also do a lot of mini documentaries. We have more of those coming up here soon. So please make sure you like and subscribe and let us know what other things you might want to see for this series or any future series. Until next time, guys, take care.